All right, let's keep moving forward. I got these things I found them. they were both inside there from the master stone or the spacers there. So I just tacked them in place because I don't have to worry about them getting lost or whatever. I think that's probably a better method. So I'm gonna go ahead, start sanding this thing, give it a quick sand job, do a little cleaning, get some epoxy primer on it and uh, then paint it with some black. Uh, I have some, you know, any somebody asked me a while back, you know, what kind of paint should you use on this? You know, you could use anything from Rust-Oleum to Pour 15 to single stage urethane with a, a epoxy primer. You know, I have some single stage urethane satin that I've got for free, so I'm going to use that. But you could use you could use a tractor supply. You know, paint for a tractor would be fine. Anything because it doesn't see sun, so it's not going to matter it's not going to get damaged you know very quickly so uv protected paint you know doesn't even matter that much only thing i wouldn't use is a water base you know on this really i, I use a water base stuff that turns to oil on my buses underneath because i can use an airless to spray it all over and it actually works really good it's a kind of an interesting paint but i'm not going to use that on this because it's just too easy for me to use a single stage year thing because i have it so anyway i'll talk to you guys a little bit later
All right, how we do? Still drying, it's not quite dry yet, but I bumped that thing there once. So that didn't go well. Oh, the run kind of went down in the corner. That's fine. There won't be rust there. So what are we gonna do? We have this little problem solver right here that if, you know, when we go to flip this thing over, we're gonna scratch the crap out of it, but we can just go tss, 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 fix that real quick with one of these satin. Works pretty good. The matches it pretty close. Good enough. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. It looks nice. It's nice and clean. The seams on this side I did seam sealer on. This one I, I'm going to do after and then tss, 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 you know fill that in and then tss, 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 fix that problem. You know. That's why we're doing this. But get it to look good enough. I mean it's just a lot easier to use a spray gun. And I put a little thicker coat on there. Be protected real well. That had that was sealer. The first thing you saw was epoxy primer sealer. And I just put that down as a and it went right over that while it's still sticky. You can do that with some products. You gotta read the labels, find out which one you can do it with. Some of the epoxies will allow you to go over it. It's still st sticky. So I gotta get this thing overnight. Uh, and just so you know, this stuff dries really, really fast. It won't overspray doesn't land on other cars that I have, so don't worry about that. I already know. I painted ATMs machines with this stuff and I had cars sometimes 20 feet away and nothing on them. I could tell I could go over and touch them. There's no feeling overspray on them or anything. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, check this out now. Nice, beautiful satin. No shine. Yeah. That's looking good there. Hides everything. And it protects it really good too. Well, that's it. Overnight, we still got it's t right a touch, but it's still kind of sticky. Got a couple more hours before that thing can be moved. By tomorrow, it'll be perfect. All right, time for some scratching. No, not that kind. Just scratching the crap out of this. We know what's going to happen. Let's just see what's going on. And uh, talk to you guys a little later. A little hunky here. A little hooky over here. Something like that.
All right, guys, she's pretty dirty. I'm going to get the, uh, use some of that super clean. Works really good. Scratch some of this up a little bit. Put some of that on here. Then uh, get this thing all cleaned up, sanded, ready for paint. Shouldn't take that long, really. It's pretty easy. It's just cleaning up this. Yucky stuff here is not fun. But anyway, let's get on it. All right, so that's what we got there. That stuff is like 50 years of tar grease. I mean, it's not tar, it's grease, but it's just so embedded in there. Just getting that stuff off was really hard. So, I mean, there's some on there still a little on there. I'm not really worried about it. But yeah, I just, just like I said, I want to get something on here so we got a basis. So it's not like that, you know, that's, that's a problem. So I'll go ahead and sand this down real quick. I'm using 150 if you're wondering. 150 primer paint. I don't care as long as it's, like I said, I'm not looking for super nice finish or anything. I just want it to be protected. And 150 will scratch enough to get it to stick. Then uh, I was thinking on this, maybe undercoating it. Um, but... I think what I'm going to do is if I do that, then I'll do it after it's done. I'll put it up on the lift and I'll just do the undercoating afterwards. Because I always want to have epoxy primer and at least underneath the undercoating. So I could put down the epoxy primer, undercoat this, and then paint it. But I know that by the time I go and tip it back over, I mean, I'm going to lose half of that undercoating. So they're going to lose a bunch of it. So I figure if I just do it now, you know. Then I can come back later or put it up in the car lift and then just tape it off and do it. And then I'm going to, after I'm done with that, then I'm going to shoot clear 
over the um, undercoating. And what that does is that may gives it a really hard finish. It's like what they do on these newer cars. This is a product called, uh, they have one, 3M has one called Body Shoots. And what they do is they put that on and they paint over it. And that's actually over an, like an epoxy e-coat, uh, something similar to that. So it has like a primer underneath it that's that's a that got zinc in it and stuff that stops the metal from rusting. Then they put this on to keep the rock chips from going through it. And then they paint over that. I heard from a lot of people that say that uh, eat, that if you undercoat something that it makes it not, you know, it makes it worse. It's like, no, if you do it that way, it's like better, way better. It, 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 rock chips can't chip it. The other option is people go out and have it powder coated. I think it's kind of unnecessary. I, I That's a lot of money to spend to have this whole pan powder powder coated to have it all sandblasted, powder coated. The issues with that is you can't put seam sealer on the seams unless you just have it exposed. So, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I don't really feel like, I think that's an unnecessary expense. I think if you start your project and you start it out that way and you go out and do your pan, you know, powder coat your pan, you're going to have a $30,000 project. That's what you're going to be looking at. You know, because you're going to pay all that money for the, in the beginning and then you forget about all the stuff at the end. Nuts and bolts end up costing you almost $1,000. You get stainless stuff. Easy. You know, it comes, it adds up real quick. So, Yeah. Anyway, that's why I don't like to start them like that. If you start it out wrong, you start it out with a lot of expense in the beginning and trying to get to the end, you know, a lot of times guys lose their project over that and losing the car because they can't finish it. It's too expensive. <laughs> Rust neutralizer. Well, let's take a look see yeah I got really don't notice where those welds were now it's hard to tell I mean it's not perfect but then these pans were never perfect when they were new the stampings were all funky and weird so it looks good it's a primer on there so put the black on here a little bit once it sets up I think maybe I'll put my seam sealer on there real quick yeah, it's, it's going to crack around those, but that's okay. We got the method.
All right, well, let's take a look at what we got here. You really don't see where it was grafted. Looks fine. You know, there's some signs of it there, but that's, <laughs> I mean, he's going to be looking like that. And it's still drying more, some more and more satin. It'll be dry in like an hour and the sun is going down. And we're supposed to have rain. So I might just go ahead and end this one here and then uh, make this a short video. And then I'll bring you guys back in when I get it done. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have in the future here a video on putting these solid boots on. So I'll have that before I get the trans ready. And I'm going to clean up the axles and paint them. I'll just spray bomb those suckers. Then I got to do what I'm going to do to this. I don't know. Um, it is leaking out of the input shaft. So I may have doing the... It's not leaking if it's sitting upright. It won't leak. So it's... you know. I don't know. I'll figure that out. And then finish up, probably just spray bomb this thing. I'm not going to get too elaborate on there and get it all cleaned up. I have to do that still. And then we'll just do our assembly and do it all at once. I'm thinking. And I'm gonna, I got all the brake parts I need here. Uh, got uh, all that stuff. And uh, all, everything, so I can start assembling it all. I'll have it all assembled and done very quickly. So, anyway, that's it for it. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.